Hey everyone, it's a historic day in Brightline Eating Land. I am here with Kirsten Dunteman, a 26 year old Bright Lifer from Kansas City, Missouri. And this is our first, very first inaugural uh, Brightline Eating Facebook Live interview of someone in the community, someone other than me. We're just branching out in radical ways. Hey Kirsten, how are you, sweetie? I'm great, how are you doing? I'm great too. I'm great. I was just bragging to you a second ago that um, I've gotten 20,000 steps in and it's, you know, just lunchtime. So, so fist bump there. Yeah, I feel great. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I'm doing really good. I'm so excited and honored. Um, my heart was racing a little bit earlier, but I did a nice meditation and grounding. So I'm feeling really good now. Sweet. Totally. And welcome everybody. I want to hear some hellos. Post down below in the comments. Say hi to Kirsten and thank her for her courage. She is the first one. This is going to be the first of many. And the purpose is to, uh, you know, just like the vlog. I don't know if you caught the vlog this week where we had, you know, a couple dozen people featured. I don't know how many. Lots of people featured um, talking about their tips and what's going on for them in, in quarantine land. It's called Quarant Tips. Um, Shout out to Daniel Maggio for that uh, name, the Brightline Eating video editor. But people loved it. Like they, they're they loving hearing from other people. And Kirsten, if I'm honest, you're younger than our average Bright Lifer. Like our average Bright Lifer is uh, white and female and higher than average socioeconomic status and about 55 years old-ish, I think. Something mm -hmm. like that. And you're 26, is that right? Yeah, and I started this when I was 24. Wow, you started when you were 24. Amazing. How did you get to the point? And let me just tell everyone, I actually don't know Kirsten at all. Like <laughs> she and I have never to my I mean, have we, have we ever talked, Kirsten? Mm -mm. No. No. Never. Not even on a coaching call? Mm -mm. Like never ever. So it must have been quite a, a shock when you were like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> you want me to what? How did that how did that uh come in? Like, how did that happen? I don't how even know how you, I don't even know how you got here, to be honest. Like, I think my team had, my, it was my team. They did it. Do you know how it happened? What happened? Yeah, I was reached out by your assistant and said, hey, your name's been floating around for an interview. Would you be interested in talking to Susan? And I said, absolutely. I've actually never spoken to her even after all this time. And I would love to share my story. That's so sweet. Now, you know my assistant, right? My executive assistant is named Amber Pennington. And were you guys in a boot camp, in the boot camp house together or something? Yeah, we were. I started Brightline Eating a year before, and then I joined boot camp and met Amber and two other ladies, and we joined a mastermind group. <gasps> You're in Amber's mastermind group? I was in boot camp, yeah. Okay, I got, got it. it. So not anymore, but you were then? Yeah. Sweet. So she knows you and maybe your name came up because you're younger than average, right? And we are looking for diversity. Like we want voices, you know, from people from backgrounds other than mine. People are really familiar now with the sound, the look, the feel, the description of the bright line eating journey from a, a middle-aged white woman with three kids who's a 10 plus 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 on the susceptibility scale and well-educated and you know, been doing this a long time. Like that's the voice that we always hear. And so we want a diversity of voices. So because probably you're 26, your name came up. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Great. Candace says, I'm so excited for this. Hi, Candace Nelson, I'm so glad. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Michelle Jeffrey says, hi to both of you from Denver. Sonia Marie says, hi, Kirsten, I'm from Massachusetts. Thank you for being brave. Um, Lisa Cantor says, hi, Kirsten from Toronto. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, Don Zacco says, hi, Kirsten. I'm from Independence close by. Do you oh, know where that is? Close. Yeah, that's about 20, 30 minutes from me. Nice. Um, Susan Martin Oler says, hi, Susan and Kirsten. Kirsten has been doing great free Zumba classes for us. <laughs> what? what? Yes. Uh, so one of my biggest non-scale victories with Brightline Eating and Weight Loss is that I became a certified Zumba and work dance fitness instructor, something I had been wanting to do for years. And so with everything with COVID and shutdown, I have started doing free classes via Zoom. And I made a post about it in Bright Lifers and the exercise group. And I've gotten to have some amazing BLE faces join me as well. Okay, what is, you said free Zumba and work what? What was that phrase you used? It's work, dance, fitness, W-E-R-Q. 
Oh, work, W-E-R-Q. I did one of those classes. That's like hip hop. That's yes. Oh, you've done it. Not many people have heard about I it. I did a work class, W-E-R-Q. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I've done one and I loved it. It was, um, it was hard on my knees, if I'm honest, but I'm getting some knee rehab right now because it was a lot of like, you know, squatting down and like, mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and it was amazing. It was super intense and yeah, like hit really heavy hip hop, which I love. Um, so you teach work now too? Yeah, I started with Zumba and I love it. Um, it's a little bit lower impact and it's more Latin and salsa and very dancey, but work hit a very special place in my heart. I discovered it last year and um, I went to a special event that had three instructors and they were all dancing together and it was mostly hip hop and I was like, this is my place. So I got certified in that last November and I've been teaching it and that's definitely my favorite format. It is higher impact with more squats, punches, yeah. jumping jacks. Um, but I still show a lot of modifications in my class as well for people that especially do have knee issues. But yeah, I love work. That is my favorite format to teach. Now, can you um, get us a link if people want to participate in these? How? Because now people are going to want to know. They're going to want to <laughs> know. Do you have an email list? Can people, are you emailing an email I list? I have a Facebook group. Well, let me, Facebook. I think it's called Kirsten Dunneman Dance Fitness. Let me double check the name. But I just started that and I'm posting all of the information in there including okay. this link. and just so everyone knows this wasn't like i'm not the, you know I'm, I'm not getting an affiliate commission we didn't plan kirsten and i have spent zero seconds prepping for this interview we literally just saw each other as i was putting on my makeup in the screen like two seconds before this started so this just came out but i feel like people are gonna, people are going to ask so we might as well just give them the information so what's the name of the facebook group kirsten dunteman dance fitness Dance fitness, mm -hmm. and I, I believe it must be Kirsten's name must be in the 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 show notes or whatever for this. So Kirsten Dunteman Dance Fitness. Mm -hmm. What time of day are the classes? Because I'm like now wondering about my own schedule. Like, I don't <laughs> so I just recently started it. It's a little bit up in the air. I'm making the schedule at the beginning of the week for the rest of the week, just depending on my own work and other meetings that I have. So I'm doing at least one class in the evening and then a class on Saturday morning. Um, but I def I'm going to send out a poll and probably get some more times from people to figure out what works best and get a little bit more of a set schedule. So right cool. now I'm in the beginning phases, but if you join it, you'll be able to stay updated. I love it. I mean, I'm super excited. I mean, I don't know who else is taking this time of, you know, lockdown to, um, you know, work on their body, get fitter. Um, I know um, in Bright Line Eating, I think there's a real difference um, in how we're handling this COVID experience on average. Like not every, you know, some people are definitely for sure back in the food. Some people are always back in the food. That's, that's you know, um, that's just a reality is food is a beast, right? But um, I hear a lot of people around here leaning into their habits almost more, you know? We can't travel, we can't socialize late at night, we can't do all these things, so we're home. And we're like, you know, honing our habits and getting our food straight. Is that your experience, Kristen? Kirsten, how are your lines right now? And how's your food? And how are you doing through this? Yeah, so when everything first kind of hit, I was a little bit um, excited just to pull back on life. I'm like, oh, things are shutting down. I've been so busy and overwhelmed. This should help my food. Um, and then in the evenings, I started feeling lonely and sad and out of control. I didn't even watch the news, honestly. I get updates from friends because I just can't handle it. Yeah. And I started overeating at night. So all my meals were the same, but at night I was just snacking and getting more into party mode. So I did a little bit of parts work. Um, now, was that on NMF? Uh, like not my food, like junk food, snack food, or was it on Brightline foods, just eating more of them? It was mostly on Brightline Foods, a little bit of junk food, but not much. I'm actually an eight on the scale. And okay. so even a little bit, it doesn't tend to throw me into a huge binge. I like to play Russian roulette with breaking my lines, whereas, oh, this time was fine, this time was fine, and then one day it's not. Um, but at the beginning, it was just extra snacking, and I realized I was really wanting to party. I was wanting fun. I'm like, I'm already being self-motivated to work from home all day. At the end of the day, I just want to check out and have fun. And so my indulger decided that that was snacking after dinner. And then I finally, after a couple weeks in, looked at that part and said, I'm not feeling good in my body. I'm feeling bloated. What do I need to change? I feel like my program is tight except for in the evening. And I realized I needed more fun in my life and figuring out what that looked like. It was dance. 
for sure. I actually have little disco lights that I put up one night, turned on music, and convinced my husband to do some West Coast swing dancing with me. Nice. And I was elated. And I turned into a whole different person. And I was like, food? What's food? I don't care. Like, my soul is getting fed right now. And right. so um, my lines have been bright for, I think, five or six days in a row now. I still struggle a little bit with some wonky days of just having a little bit of extra bright line eating food. That has always been my struggle. Um, but for the most part, I'm starting to get so much more centered back into my highest self, keeping my bright lines and feeling sane because I did not like just feeling bloated and out of control. And like, I needed food to have fun. I felt like I had grown away from that. So I'm like, why am I reverting back to this? But I know it was just with everything changing and going up in the air. But yeah, definitely feeling much more solid now. And a huge part of that is finding my thing that is making me have fun. And that's dance right now. Yeah. So um, we've got a question. I follow you on Instagram. I love your posts. Are you on maintenance? If so, how did you know when to transition into maintenance? And if not, what are your goals for transitioning into maintenance? Yeah, so my maintenance journey was a little bit different. Um, I had finished boot camp and I hit my first big weight loss goal. And I was trying to decide. What, what was that, sweetheart? Like, what, what are your numbers? Where are you coming from? So I'm five foot two. My highest weight ever was 198. And I started Brightline eating at 175. That's and pretty big. Five foot two and 198. I'm going to Google that. Like, I'm just the researcher in my mind. BMI calculator is like, what class of obesity is that? That's beyond class one obesity. I'm pretty darn sure. Yeah. Five foot two and 198. How old were you when you were five foot two and 198? 19. Oh my goodness. Years old. Yeah. You're, you're such a beautiful girl. I'm sure people are looking at you going, oh, you know, she's just stunning. Like, you know, um, but like at 19 years old, you are 198 pounds, that's a particular kind of life experience. Like that's intense. It was really intense. I had, I got married at 18 and that first year, my husband and I were like, we are freshly married. We're in college. Let's eat all the frozen, not my food. And it just went crazy. And my so husband I and I did that too. We gained so much <laughs> weight in our first couple of years of marriage. Seriously. And it was so funny. I had people tell me that was probably going to happen. And I was like, there's no way. And now my husband and I joke to newly married couples. We're like, just let you know, it's so easy to just eat all the junk food. Um, so, so real quick, yeah. I found it. That's a BMI of 36.2, which is class two obesity. So there's class one obesity, which is a BMI of 30 to 35, class two obesity, 35 to 40, class three obesity, which is above 40. So yeah, okay, so morbidly obese. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're 19, you're morbidly obese, then what? Yeah, at my highest weight ever, feeling so miserable. And I had tried so many different things, juice cleanses, um, binging, restricting, found Brightline eating, um, got down to, so my lowest- At the age of 24. You found Brightline eating at the age of 24? 24, How? yeah. How? How did you find Brightline eating? So I found Brightline eating through an email from Wellness Mama. She had done, I think, a podcast with you and Maybe mentioned- no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I looked it up. I took the quiz, found out I was an eight and watched the videos. And I was so enthralled. I was like telling my husband to come in, we're watching the videos. And then you get to the part where you say no sugar, no flour. And I'm like, oh, never mind. I can't do that. Are you kidding me? And he was like, no, this seems really different. I think you should give it a try. And I'm like, there's no way, but I'll order the book. So I got the book and I read it with two, within two days crying in my backyard being like I have to try this she's talking to me it's not that I'm lazy it's not that I am weak I just am addicted and that was such a hard pill to swallow so I said I'll do this for six months we'll see so I started with the 14 day challenge and six months in I'm like yep this is working I need to keep going and after a year that's when I joined boot camp because I needed that extra support to get to my goal weight yeah after boot camp, I hit my lowest weight of 139, which I have never seen in my adult life. The lowest I remember being is 13 years old in dance at 150. So that was huge for me to hit that 139. I was so elated. Um, but when I had started Brightline eating about 
four months in, my cycles got wonky. And so I hit the point last year where I was like, do I want to keep going, get lower to my goal weight of 125? Or do I want to try to work on hormones because I'd like to get pregnant soon? So I did call in for a coaching call as soon as I joined Bright Lifers and talked it over. And at that time I did decide, okay. With me? No, it was with Marion. Okay. Yeah. And I decided to just maintain the way, the weight that I was at. The number is still like, I've been maintaining about 143, 145. That's still a hard number for me to see, but I am in a size six jeans and I am muscular. So I had to come to peace with that and say, I'm going to start maintenance. Um, I really want to get my hormones balanced. So I've been on maintenance for a year now. You look amazing. And for anyone out there who doesn't know, Evolutionarily, this makes a lot of sense if you just think about it, right? When um, when the body gets it into its, you know, its sweet little mind that like there's a famine, an extended famine, it can uh, alter the hormonal system to shut down reproduction temporarily. Like why would you bring a baby into the world if there's not even enough food for the adults, right? Like that doesn't make any sense. So um, uh, amenorrhea or cycle um, abnormalities are a potential side effect of weight loss. And it's in the medical literature. It's temporary, the body, but, but it, it's, it's temporary, but the body sometimes sputter starts to kind of get out of that rut. Like, to, you know, the body has to come to trust. There really is enough food around. And so that's where like being at a solid weight for a period of time. Have you gotten your cycle back? Are you regular now? It was for a while and then it kind of disappeared and it's been on and off. So I need to just go to a doctor and get tested and figure out if there's some underlying issues. Um, I finally was going to do that before the world kind of exploded. So I'm holding off on that, but I do feel better overall. Like I have really high energy. So besides my cycle still being a little wonky, I feel otherwise hormonally balanced. So I'm curious what the underlying issue is. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So um, I had that. So I'll just share what I know about it. There's no solid science on it, but there's a lot of uh, folk wisdom around women like me who've been through it. Um, and what I would say is if you can tweak your food plan to add more fat, it can really help. There's yeah. something about fat that, you know, more, um, And, you know, try to really go for healthy fats. Mm -hmm. And it might mean, I hate to say this, that you put on an extra two or three or five pounds, right? Just let it slide up a little bit. But if if all of that extra food is coming from fat, the brain, um, there's some sort of relationship between hormones and fat that, um, yeah, that's that's Mm -hmm. what I did. I put on a few pounds and I ate a lot of fat. Uh, a lot of nuts, a lot of seeds, um, a lot of like evening primrose oil and vitamin E oil and stuff like that. Um, full fat yogurt, that kind of thing. And yeah, and it came back. Yeah, I switched out my morning grain for a serving of fat. It's almost always avocado. And I did notice when I hit that, you know, lowest of 138, 139, it did kind of comfortably slide up to that 143, 145. And I've been pretty much there with some exceptions of going up or down outside of that range um, temporarily. And that was so weird for me to see that number. And I went through this period of, I failed. I didn't get down all the way to goal weight. And yeah. I had to really sit with, I'm actually doing this because that's what my body needs right now. And that's okay. I'm still doing the yeah. program. I didn't fail. I've chosen this. It's fine. Totally. I love that. And are you really sitting in peace around that most of the time? Does that feel authentic for you? Most of the time, I mean, there are still a lot of times where it's so easy for me to get obsessed with numbers and feeling like I found the program that would finally get me to my ideal weight and I chose to stop. Why did I do that? But that's where I've started to switch my mindset out of a number on the scale and really centering myself into my body, which is why exercise has also been huge because I'm able to do so many more things now than I ever dreamt of. And I am so much healthier that I've really narrowed in on focusing on that. And that's made a huge difference. And it's gotten me out of diet mentality as well, because when I very first started maintenance, I was like, oh, maybe as an eight on the scale, I can start to like add these things back in. And who cares if I'm going to be a little bit bigger anyway? No, bad idea. (laughs) Yeah. What happens for you when you do that? Like, what's the impact? It's fine for a while. And that's what's so frustrating. It really is. Like for a little while, 
and it's not that big of a deal. And then it slowly escalates and I start to lose peace and I get back into how much can I have? How much can I not have? Um, I used to be obsessed with like paleo desserts. So there's still that voice in my head that's like, well, almond flour, it's a fat and blah, blah, blah. So I will find myself slipping into that road. And because it's not bad at first, I really can be in denial about it, but it always catches up with me. I always lose my peace and I just yeah. have to come back to the program. Yeah, totally. It's, it's amazing how much the freedom, the freedom goes. And once you've had real freedom and neutrality around food, like just not thinking about it and just outliving your life with all this energy and stuff, it, it, it really is. I, I mean, for me, I'll just speak for myself. There's no going back. Like I, my system won't tolerate for long being back in that diet mentality, the wrangling about, you know, can I game it here? Or what if I have less there? Or what was my weight this morning? And oh, yeah, no, thank you. Like really, I've given enough of my thinking to food. And I just won't tolerate that. It's just such a sub standard way of existing compared to really being free and neutral with your food, you know? Yeah. And before Bright Line Eating, I was obsessed with doing juice cleanses because it was quick weight loss but I was so cold and miserable from the sugar crap, the sugar spikes and crashes that I would be in bed for a week, shivering, being like, but I'm losing weight. <laughs> and then <laughs> I would get off of it and I would try to do calorie counting and macro counting. And I would get so obsessed with inputting all of my food. And then at the end of the day, oh, I have an extra hundred calories. Let me go make this paleo, not my food. And then it would down spiral from there. And then the next day I'd gear up all over again. So now to have, to know what I'm going to eat for the three meals, I, a lot of times I don't even write down my food because it has just become so automatic. When I break my lines, it's normally on top of my um, existing meals. My regular bright line eating meals are almost untouched now because it's just so automatic. And I was reflecting on that yesterday thinking, I cannot believe how much more brain space I have now. Like before I was so obsessed and I spent so much time even putting in all that food on my phone. My husband were like, we're, we're trying to eat dinner. Why are you on your phone? I'm like, well, I have to see if I can have two tablespoons of this or not. And if there's going to be room, I mean, it was so obsessive and exhausting that now that I've experienced this, I can't go back. Yeah, totally. It's like, it's so funny just to even hear you say the thought. I have a hundred calories left. Maybe I'll go make a paleo dessert. Oh, yeah. Like it's like, it, like that sentence is like the antithesis of what we don't do in bright light eating, right? It's sort of like the, why the calorie counting goes wrong, right? Like why that's not the right way to think about it. You need to think about your food in terms of categories and quantities and three meals a day, nothing after. And it's like, yeah. And, but I love, I love, I, so, you know, I come from a background with my own journey that's very, um, judgmental, extremely judgmental. The community that I was in, it was a 12 step food addiction program that, you know, if your food wasn't perfect, there was a, a, an unbelievable amount of judgment and shame mm -hmm. in the community around that. Only people with perfect food could speak at meetings, could do service work in the community, could have any sort of status or identity at all in the community and people who, did, who weren't perfect with their food. I mean, it was under the guise of like, you know, I think, I think it was the legitimate motivation for it was like, you know, to, to keep a message of strong recovery from the room and stuff. Um, but anyway, um, I know that it's something that I continually strive for in bright line eating is that we check our, our shame and our judgment at the door. Right. And it's like, it's such a, an illustration of like, you know, you're sharing with the world here that you're, you're in bright line eating, your food hasn't been perfect. Right. And, you know, you used to be 198 pounds you know, you're 143, 145, whatever you are right now, like dancing up a storm, mm -hmm. you know, in a body that's thriving and healthy, beautiful, and mostly like peaceful, like, mm -hmm. and if you're not peaceful with a roadmap map to get back to peace, yes. right? Like exactly. here I am here again. Okay. No shame, no judgment, no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, sweetheart, this doesn't work as well as we want our life to work. So let's just bring ourselves back to what works. Let's bring ourselves back to that peaceful path. Do you want to speak at all about your path of self-compassion? You sound very self-compassionate to me. I'm loving it. I've actually complained to my mastermind group before. I'm like, I'm too easy on myself. I don't have a strong <laughs> enough perfectionist. <laughs> yeah. And one of my friends was like, that's a good thing. That is so good because then you don't crash hard. Yeah. And I think that's definitely true. I can be, I go the other way. I can be too lenient on myself and say, 
this doesn't really matter, it's fine, it's not escalating, Hakuna Matata, it's all good, you'll get back there. Um, but the huge benefit of that is I am incredibly self-compassionate. I understand that if I'm not perfect with my food, it's because there's something deeper going on because I feel so steady in knowing what the Brightline eating plan is and my meals are. If I'm not following that, there's always something deeper. And so I've yes. learned, especially with recent parts work, that has been huge for me, um, learning to become curious and self-compassionate about what's going on instead of immediately criticizing myself, which I was really lucky to, I have a mom that um, example that for me beautifully. And so she taught me how to ask those questions and instead of just immediately getting hard on myself and say, what's really going on here? I know it's not the food. I'm not even getting triggered. I'm not eating anything, not my food. I'm, it's, it's something internal. And so I've learned to just be really gracious with myself. And a huge part of that is because I know I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not going anywhere. And so if I don't have a bright day, I don't have to panic about it. If the scale pops up for a minute, I don't have to panic about it because I know what to do. So instead of obsessing about I'm not doing the right thing, I try to just look within and really figure out what's going on. And a lot of it is a part popping up, a need that may not be getting met. Like what I said earlier, even where it's like, I realize I really want fun. It's not that I want snacks at night, it's that I want fun. Yes. And so just being really compassionate with those needs in myself and that it's okay to need that because there is some there can be guilt with that. I mean, even now I'm like, there's so many other people suffering worse than me. And here I am complaining that I'm not having enough fun in life, you know, but I, I've learned to really validate those needs because when I do, my food gets corrected so much quicker. Yes. You know, you're having a positive impact, uh, talking about this stuff. So Michelle Moore says, what a stunning, smart, articulate young woman. Thank you for sharing with us, Kirsten. And Betsy Hayes says, this is really helping me resume and rekindle my Sisu. Sensible Kirsten is helping me recharge my BLE self. Aww. How sweet Maybe. is that, right? Maybe. Yeah. You know, you're talking about parts work. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm curious, I just caught something you said. I don't know if you noticed. You said, I can actually be too lenient on myself, right? Mm -hmm. I can say, it doesn't matter. It won't, you know, like I'll get right back on, blah, 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 right? Are you aware that that's a part two, that that's not you? That's not your highest self? Yes, and I'm trying to remember what part that is. I think it's, isn't it the controller that's actually the least, no. Oh, it could be. I, it could be a lenient food controller. Yeah, the I, one that always- You have, have a stronger option. Hmm? The, there's a controller that just, want, it's like, well, if you're gonna cave, let's do like the least worst possible. Yes, like a, almost like a harm mitigation strategy control, wow. like a let's, you know, okay, so you're gonna, yeah. So, and that might be, you might have a food indulger. It sounds like your food indulger part is a little bit of a party girl. She wants to have fun, right? She wants oh, yeah. to bring it out. Yeah. She wants to just like, woo! And then yeah. you may, maybe you have a food controller who's like, okay, okay, okay. So we need to have fun tonight, I get it. So let's pick something that's not gonna have like dire consequences. Let's pick yeah. something that's, you know, not going to send us off a slope that's too slippery. Mm -hmm. It might be, that might be a food controller part. Ironically, I ever, ever is so brilliant. I didn't ever imagine that a food controller could be licensing, breaking the bright lines, but it makes perfect yeah. sense to me. Yeah. I really yeah. identified with that because when people would talk about their perfectionist and being so self-critical, I didn't really see my part identifying with that. But when I read that one where it was always negotiating the least worst break because that's how my breaks start. It starts with like dried okay. fruit or something like I, it's a very right. slow one for yeah. me. Not I technically sugar. So will right. you know, right. like popcorn or whatever. Right? <laughs> like I'm sure oh, people yeah. have figured out all the millions of ways to game the system. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I um, always popcorn start. Popcorn is not a bright food. Just saying <laughs> if anyone needs SPT to tell them straight up, that is not a bright line food. Anyway, there are no bright line eating police. Eat your popcorn. What do I care? <laughs> my eyes are on my own plate, clearly. Um, yeah, so you related to that part, though, the one that, that, that's trying to negotiate the least bad break. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so cute. So how did you start doing parts work and bright line eating? You're a bright lifer. You did the boot camp. You're in bright lifers. And then did you take bright line freedom with Everett? No, but I just signed up for grit. You're in grit. Beautiful. Yeah. And have you done the first weeks of uh, the first week of, of work? 
not completely, but I did start the workbook and that's what I was doing a couple nights ago, going through some different parts and just talking to them and acknowledging them and learning about them. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I feel like I'm just dipping my toes in it. And I actually did do one session with Laura Lively once about my procrastinator and my taskmaster. Um, task master. So that's what kind of got me into it. And then just even the webinar about grit and hearing the terminology popping around, I feel like I'm just starting to dabble in and be like, oh, I, yep, I identify with that, I identify with that. So I'm really excited for grit to really dive into it because I know yeah. that is the big missing part for me. Yeah, I just finished uh, Everett's first lesson. I haven't um, done the workbook exercises, but I did. I watched the first uh, lesson and then I did the meditation this morning actually mm -hmm. and really had a sweet encounter with a couple of my parts. Um, it's amazing what happens when we bring that self energy and, and just are compassionate with them and really get curious and just dialogue with them. It's so fascinating. Like you discovered that you, do, you, you have a part, your food indulger part is really wanting to have fun and dance fills that. Um, like, it sounds like even way better than food, like dance really fills it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I get the endorphins from movement. Yep. I get to get my exercise in, listen to the music, whereas food, I may feel like I'm getting a benefit for a minute, but then there's instantly guilt, shame, feeling yeah. wanted, not feeling good. Even if I'm not hard on myself mentally, I feel it in my body. And then I'm like, well, I don't want to exercise tomorrow morning because I'm going to be too bloated. I'm going to feel so bad. Yeah, totally. So I don't know if people out there caught the webinar that I did right before we were like introducing people to the Brightline Grit course. And I did a series of three webinars with Everett. Did you catch one of those, Kirsten? Uh, yes, I did. Uh huh. So I did a lecture in there. Um, what was it called? It was called anxious brain centered brain. And I talk about cortisol, which is a stress, fear, overwhelm hormone, which is exceedingly high for people these days. And it's leading people to gain weight. Even if their lines are bright, it leads to water retention. It leads to excessive eating. It leads to uh, weight gain. Um, so cortisol is really high right now. And the brain has four happy chemicals that um, can counterbalance cortisol, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphin. And if you dance with your husband, um, you're, you're basically getting three out of four of those. Um, if you dance by yourself, you're getting, you know, a couple of them for sure, the endorphin. And when you dance for others, when you put on the classes, that, that releases a lot of serotonin. You're getting respect mm -hmm. in a social community, right? Um, so serotonin is about respect in social cir circles. Um, mm -hmm. Oxytocin is around laughter, one-on-one. -on -one you and I are getting oxytocin right now. Like right now, this is strengthening our Bright Line Eating program, literally because our oxytocin and serotonin are both going up, right? Like, let me just read you another, another comment here. Bravo, Vicky Geist says, bravo, loving this, need it. Thank you, girls. Um, Lisa Baez says, Kirsten is a wonderful BLE ambassador of the 20-something generation and an amazing inspiration for us all, no matter what age. Um, Candace Nelson says, thank you for recognizing the younger BLE population. Um, Diane Pellenberg says, loving this interview. Kirsten, you're amazing, a true inspiration. Okay, so we all just like pumped her full of serotonin, right? That was like a serotonin explosion in her brain. She and I are getting oxytocin, like we have eye contact, we're smiling, we're laughing, this is social, we're trusting each other. Like as soon as I extended the invitation for her to come on, like she got an oxytocin um, burst from that. Being trusted releases oxytocin. So there's all these ways to release happy chemicals other than the quick fix of dopamine, which comes from eating food. But what you said, Kirsten, is when you eat to satisfy that part, there's a consequence, right? It leads to disappointment. It leads to, you know, a letdown, which is more cortisol, right? Like, and that's how you get into the spiral where cortisol needs a solution. So you eat, dop you eat food and get dopamine, which quiets it down for a second. And then as soon as that dopamine fix is over, now you've got more disappointment. You don't sound like you sh spiral into shame, but a lot of people do. Shame, self-loathing, self-recrimination, you know, self-flagellation, at least feeling like, like you said, like let down, like now I don't want to dance tomorrow. Now I've put myself in a rough spot. Like I feel yucky. I feel bloated. That is all cortisol. That worry, that overwhelm, that disappointment, that letdown, that's more cortisol. 
And if eating more food is your only solution, now you're stuck in a really nasty spiral. So um, I just love that you're finding other ways to get out of that, to get out. So sweet. So um, are you trying to get pregnant right now? That's a super edgy question for me to ask. You can deny <laughs> asking, but we asked you before this, if there were any questions that were off limits and you said no. So I'm holding you to that. No, I was just about to say, I told you there's nothing off limits. So, um, yes, in a roundabout way, I am struggling with even saying yes, because <laughs> there's a part of me, there's a part of me that is beyond terrified to have kids. And it's like, you know, life's okay. Like we're, we're not really ready for that curveball. You're, you're dancing a lot. Um, yeah. sickness doesn't sound fun. And then there's another part of me that's like, I wanted kids yesterday. It's taking way too long. I want like four. I need to start now. <laughs> um, yeah. so because of my hormone issues, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like actively, actively trying because I want to get that figured out first. Um, totally. but yeah, it's definitely on my radar. Totally. Yeah. And my husband and I around our third, um, you know, I had twins, we had to do fertility treatments for those. And what, what we did was we just didn't prevent pregnancy. Right. But we didn't, we had to do fertility. I wasn't fertile. I was going through my, what I, what you're going through, um, at first. And then, um, and then I got my period back and I came to him and I was like, I just had a period. We need to have a talk. Like, he's like, we need to have a talk. I'm like, what do you mean? What do I mean? Like, I just had a period. Like, what do you, and he's like, we don't have anything to talk about. And I was like, I, I, I was like, my head was exploding. I was like, are you insane? Like, like we have to have a talk. And he's like, there's nothing to talk about. And I was like, <laughs> you mean there's nothing? so where we finally came to was he didn't, he didn't want to prevent pregnancy. He didn't think I could get pregnant. I wanted a third child and I wanted to therefore not prevent pregnancy. So we actually agreed on the daily strategy, which was we're not preventing pregnancy. We expected different outcomes from that. <laughs> but, but after, you know, so we did end up having that conversation. So I'm imagining you're somewhere in that land of like, well, we'll let it ride, right? Like, I don't know if you have a spiritual perspective or whatever, God will decide, or, you know, it will be what it will be. There's lots of ways to articulate that notion. Yep, exactly, yep. Yeah, nailed it perfectly. Totally. So you talked about maybe going to the doctor. What you'll likely find is that estrogen is low. That's what I found at least. Um, that and what what my doctor said is amenorrhea is not unhealthy. It's actually it's it's one of the reasons that it's fine to like take pills that shut off pregnancy or whatever. Mm -hmm. At least that's what he's. I mean, I was on the pill for a long time, and I don't think it was healthy for me at the end of the day. But um, um, anyway, that's what I suspect you would find. And I do think the extra fat will help. Um, Trina Summer says, can we get oxytocin from our interactions with pets or would that be serotonin or dopamine? Um, I don't know of any research on this, but I would strongly bet that yes, you can. Yes, you can. I would strongly believe that. Um, Karis Gelinek says, um, Kirsten is adorable. Does her husband also do bright line eating or does she have to do it alone? Where's your husband at with, with his food right now? And what's that like for you? This is a great question. So my husband is five foot seven, weighs 133 pounds and has forever. He is naturally very thin, very lean. Um, he gained a little bit of weight with me in our first year of marriage. <laughs> and then until his brother said, you're getting fat. And then he dropped it like like that. Um, so he does not do bright line eating, but he loves bright line eating. Let me tell you, when people notice my weight loss, he jumps in so quick. He's like, she's doing this really awesome thing. It's called bright line eating. She doesn't eat sugar or flour. It's like an alcohol addict, but for food. And, he, and I'm like, eh, that's not the best way to like <laughs> throw it out there necessarily. It always makes me laugh because he just talks really fast and he gets really excited. Um, and he told me, he's like, I gained even more respect for you when you started this because I knew it was such a hard thing, but it's been so life changing. He's like, Can you be like a coach? Can you be an advocate? Like, he absolutely loves it. So, he's incredibly supportive of me doing it. Um, sometimes I think he gets a little confused why I am as strict as I am. He's like, But you don't binge anymore, you don't go crazy. Like, you can still have a little bit. I'm like, mm, That's a slippery slope, you know. So, he's very, very supportive, very understanding. Um, getting him to measure oil while cooking for me is, is still something I'm working on because he's like, 
it needs to taste good and it's healthy fat. You need healthy fat hormones, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we can still maybe conflict a little bit, but overall he's incredibly supportive and absolutely loves that I'm doing it. It really does yeah. crack me up to hear him try to explain it to people. <laughs> yeah. So, um, has he taken the quiz? Yeah, he was a three. He was a three. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So super low, always thin. Mm -hmm. has he, did you get him when you were in boot camp? Did you get him to watch the video for friends and family? I didn't. I should do that. Yeah, you should. Yeah. It might help with the oil issue. It sounds like he really um, is one of the loved ones, God bless all of our loved ones, who actually can get it. Like some mm -hmm. of our loved ones just can't. Like they'll, they just never will. And I'm always coaching people like, let it go. You know, your mom's never going to get it or whatever, right? Like she's, she's going to be offering Easter candy forever. Like just, <laughs> just accept, right? Um, but your husband sounds like he might, he might actually. So you might want to get him to watch that video. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, I'll do that. Sherry McDonald says, Kirsten, blessings on you as you try to conceive. She says, I have PCOS, weight, hormones, got pregnant at 42, and my son is now 14. Wow. She says, bright line eating can be such a huge benefit when you have hormone issues. Oh, oh that's amazing. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Sherry. So sweet. Any other questions for Kirsten, put them in the comment thread and my team is feeding them over to me. We've gotten so much love uh, in the threads. Um, oh, one person, I believe it's Diana McDonough says, hi, Kirsten. Hi from Di from your mastermind group. You rock. So is, is Diana in your mastermind group currently? Yes, and she was one of the original ones in the boot camp mastermind group with Amber and her and I are still in one now. Nice. So sweet. So sweet. Donna Shea Abney says, wow, what a treat. Hugs from Columbia, Missouri. Um, Brittany Patterson Webster says, hi, Kirsten. So fun to see you on here. And she said, at Brittany's Bright Life here, such a great interview. Love this idea, SPT. So sweet. Marion Overgoss says, hi, Kirsten. Love seeing you and hearing you. Sending love. And Kaziah Lane says, you are an inspiration. Awesome job. You're so young and have your entire life ahead of you to be in a healthy body that you choose during each stage of your journey. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, Janice Van Tassel says, hello, Susan and Kirsten. You are both my heroes as Susan is, of course, our fearless leader. And Kirsten was on one of my Gideon Games teams. Ladies, I love you. Janice Van Tassel, you know Janice? Yes, hi, Janice. Sweet. And Penny Dennison says, admire you, and I'm happy you found Bright Line Eating way before the rest of us. So sweet. Yeah, if you put your comments in the thread, we'll get them. And loving you all. Thank you so much for that love. Oh, so what does your Bright Line Eating life look like right now? Like, tell me about a bright day. Like, what, what is a bright day for you? As far as when I'm eating? No, about like your habits. Like, you wake up and you do what? So I have actually a terrible habit of waking up and starting work right away. <laughs> that is one that I'm working on. So on really good days, which is most days, um, I wake up and I do a morning reading and I journal and I think through what I'm going to eat for the day. I don't always write it down exactly, but I at least think through it. And then I will work and then usually work out on my lunch break. And in the evening, I love to make phone calls to other bright lifers. Um, I'm talking to my friend Sarah every day, which has been a huge support for the both of us. We both have been even talking about ways to make ourselves laugh. We said, um, instead of just having a regular emergency action plan, we need an emergency action fun plan. So we've strategized some ideas for that. Um, and so when do you talk to her? Is it just catch as catch can through the day or is it? We start talking every day in the afternoon, but right before nice. dinner. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So look around on social media, but the thing that was making me laugh most late, lately was, um, oh my gosh, my husband shared this thing. Someone had written this thing on um, COVID-19 survival, mm -hmm. you know, perspectives or whatever. And it was like, it's really important to remember what's going on here, everybody. There's lots of rules. You must never leave your house mm -hmm. unless you need to go out and then you can. Um, you know, it never, it never affects kids except when it does. <laughs> um, you know, like it just went on and I was the funniest thing. Masks don't help. They don't matter except maybe they're mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> it just went on and on and on. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's so true. Like, 
like so that's true. true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sans and I were talking about that earlier. We're like the conflicting messages out there right now. It's so overwhelming. <laughs> oh God. God bless us. Uh, Janice Mc Hoover McDonald says, does she have a before picture she can share? Um, and I think my team put a link to your before and after story, uh, your before and afters with your pictures. I want to see it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone copy and paste it into the feed for me so I can see it. Um, okay. Loretta Robbie McC McClellan says, were you always so active and did you exercise during boot camp during the weight loss phase? I'm not at goal weight, but nice weather is coming and I usually bike a lot. I don't want to get discouraged if I start exercising that much and I don't lose weight. You're such an inspiration. I'm so happy for this interview today. Yeah, were you always so active and did you exercise at first, right? I always tell people lay off at first, um, unless you, it's automatic for you. What, did you. what did you do and have you always been so active? That's a great question. So I was in dance from 18 to 14 years old. And after that, wasn't super active. Wait, um, 18, four, like, so 14 to 18, you mean? Oh, sorry. From eight to 14 years old. I was eight. In dance. Yeah. eight to 14 years old, you were in dance. Okay. And then after that, I wasn't very active. Um, I had a friend move in with my husband and I for a little while, and she was incredibly active and working out. So I worked out a lot with her. Um, but it, nothing was consistent. It was just very intuitive, pretty short work, like at home workout videos. And I lost a little bit of weight uh, before Bright Line eating. It took several years and it was a lot of yo-yoing, but I never lost it when I was working out because my hunger would spike. I felt like I deserved reward, um, you know, et cetera. So when I started Bright Line eating, I did not exercise. And that was hard because I wasn't really in a full routine in, of it, but I love movement. I love getting out. So the most I would do was light bike rides and walking. I noticed if I exercised any heavier, I really felt like I needed more food. I don't know how true that was, but it felt like I needed a lot more food. Yeah. So I did not exercise until maintenance actually, because every time I tried, it would affect my food or I felt like I wasn't losing as quickly. Yeah. Nice. And so now here you are, have you watched the goal body video? the vlog yeah. on goal body that it was feels to me like you've really embodied that that you're really sort of coming you know and we all have the part of us that's hung up on the number and mm -hmm. says you're a failure if you don't you know whatever right reach this barbie doll status or whatever but it sounds like really your your primary energetic thrust is around what you can do with your body and like you know, feeling so much better in your skin. What's it like for you to be a size six now? You were 198 pounds at five foot two at 19 years old and you're wearing size six jeans and you're only 26 now. What's it like for you to have gone through that physical change? And what's it like for your husband to have his wife have gone through that physical change? Yeah, going from a size 16 jeans to a size six was something I never dreamt of. I remember when I got into size 10, I was ecstatic and then eight and then six, like I'm still in denial. I'm still You're like, like your head, yeah. like that head exploding emoji. Like, Pugh. right. I'm convinced that sizes have just changed. Like, I'm just like, there's no way that I fit. Into this. Um, so it feels incredible, very surreal, but absolutely amazing. Um, I feel like I do sometimes have a little bit of body dysmorphia around it. And so often I do put my own comparison pictures on my um, Instagram of my before and after, because I need that reminder to see how far yeah. I am and see how healthy I am now. And it is easy to get hung up on for how short I am. I should be this blank number, but I've really switched my focus on to, okay, now I can run three miles without stopping. I can dance for an hour and burn 500 calories. My heart rate is, you know, really high and I feel incredible all day long. So switching yeah. that focus to what my body can do has been huge. And one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I wanted to lose weight was so I could run, go running with my husband and go hiking. He grew up on a farm. He is a huge outdoors person. And um, when we got together and I realized I could not keep up with him, even on hikes, I was dragging down and feeling like I was holding him back was devastating. And now sometimes when we go on a run, he's taking breaks and I'm still going and Woo! I'm pushing him on hikes. Woo! So for him, that was huge to be able to feel like he had a partner in crime that he could go on hikes with. We were in California in January, went hiking every single day and Where? Um, San Diego. Nice. Yeah. And it was so beautiful and we enjoyed it. And we'd go on six mile hikes, like it was nothing, bunch of hills. We would run together. So for him, that was 
life-changing. He was like, I wanted my best friend to be able to do this with me. And I know you didn't feel good lagging behind. So yeah. that's incredible. I'm so, so grateful. Oh, that's, I, I want you to know, I pulled up your before and after pictures that got the, the link got put in the, um, in the comment thread as well. And yeah, I mean, what a difference. I got to say, I love your haircut. Your the way you're doing your hair now is so adorable. Um, yeah. And yeah, huge change. And oh my gosh, I mean, you just look stunning and healthy and, you know, in bright line eating, we are so, um, uh, sort of fierce, I think, about like the notion of a right-sized body being incredibly individual, right? And what I think you're bringing to this conversation as well is additional nuance. Nuance is my favorite word. It all depends. It's all subtle. I mean, bright line eating is so exacting. And just saying, the fearless leader of bright line eating says, yes, and it's, it's all very nuanced. And what you're bringing is the nuance of um, goal body and a right-sized body is also different season by season. And that has been my experience as well, right? Like I claim maintenance now for 16 years and my weight has varied as much as 20 pounds in that time, healthily, um, you know, like sometimes I've, I've been as low as 105.8 at five foot three and I've been as heavy as 133 at five foot three and that's without pregnancy. Now you add pregnancy in there and forget about it, right? Like I've had two pregnancies during those, during those years as well. I've, I've deliberately put on weight to try to uh, conceive a child, right? It's a gift to your future child. Like mm -hmm. it's actually a really tiny sacrifice compared to what's coming. So like, it's a good <laughs> way to like go into the mindset of like, my body's not gonna be my own. I might as well just sacrifice now. This is what it takes to conceive. You know what I mean? Like um, more sacrifices are coming. Like your body gets hijacked in ways you can't even imagine. So it, yeah. And, I, and before I lost weight on Brightline eating, I was actually really worried to get pregnant because I already felt so big. And especially in my stomach, I'm like, there's no room for a baby. Um, yeah. <laughs> I really don't feel good. I can't. There's no room for a baby. I love that. There's, I was like, there's no room. Like I'm too short. My torso is not that long. It's already filled up with fat. Like I did not feel comfortable even the idea of getting pregnant um, at a heavier weight by any means. And I saw a friend who had a lot of complications with her um, delivery and her pregnancy. And the doctor said a big part of this is because you're overweight and a lot of it could have been prevented. And that hit so deeply for me and I'm like I can't bring a child into this world in the state that I'm in so yeah to have to be in a healthier body and I do have to remember it is healthy and right sized even if it's not the most ideal or my original number that I had in mind this is the perfect body that I need to be in for my future children and I feel so much more confident now in the idea of getting pregnant and carrying a baby than I ever did before so yeah, I have to remind myself of that same thing. This is the season of life I'm in. Um, one day, you know, after I have kids, I might get lower. I might not. I'll figure it out then. And right now I'm just enjoying this body now. Beautiful. Love it, Kirsten. Keep finish taking us through your day. So um, I believe your buddy, um, Sarah, where'd she go? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Sarah Beth. Yes. Kirsten, you're such a supportive friend, buddy, and inspiration to me. I'm thankful for you and glad so many people can hear your wonderful journey. So sweet. Oh, she's the sweetest. Um, uh, Lisa Baez says, love your emergency action fun plan. <laughs> um, yeah. Jerry Nagler Robbins says, beautiful pictures, wonderful interview. Um, Laura Krug says, so fun to hear you both laughing during this interview. Very refreshing. Um, Carol Mitchell says, so enjoying this fabulous conversation, inspirational, fun, and oh, so real and relatable. Um, Sharon Robinson says, Kirsten, I just saw your before and after photos. Wonderful. You are an inspiration to us all. Um, so um, keep taking us through your day. You, let's, like, what's your evening routine like? You talk to Sarah in the afternoon, uh -huh. you dance, you, you, or you work out midday, and what do you do in the evening? Um, recently I have been spending a lot of time FaceTiming friends. I'm also doing some nonprofit projects in the evening and I'm trying to get back into reading, working on that identity of at least reading a little bit every night. I've gotten so used to audiobooks and being able to move around while listening that it's hard for me to sit and read, but it's a really good skill that I love and I want to grow in. So I'm working on reading every night before bed too. It helps me sleep better and I feel more peaceful. So that is one of my favorite habits that I'm starting to lean back into as well. Nice. And Laura Krug says, does Kirsten do a daily meditation? 
that is another habit of mine that has been spotty. Um, I have been working on it recently. And when I do, like I did one earlier today, oh, it was so grounding and incredible. And I have occasionally done visualizations at night where I like to visualize what I'm going to do the next day, what time I want to wake up, how I feel. And I found that that really helps me when I am having trouble meditating and kind of quieting my monkey brain. Then I sometimes just switch into a visualization and that's been really beneficial. But yeah, it's not a steady habit, but when I do it, I love it. It's on that back burner of like, make this more of a habit because you feel so good. Why do you forget to do this? <laughs> nice. Michelle Moore says, Kirsten, what kind of work do you do? So I am a contracted executive assistant in internal operations. So I have a couple different clients and I help their businesses in a lot of different ways. <laughs> nice. And Sam Lynch says, hello, fellow millennial. Kirsten's Instagram is a huge motivator for me, and I'm so excited to hear more about her experience. I want to know what her favorite Brightline meal is. Ooh, you know, one of my favorite meals is actually lunch, and I love eating sandwiches with Ezekiel bread or wraps and lettuce. That just gets me excited. So the other day I made lettuce wraps, put some homemade hummus on it, some turkey meat, homegrown sprouts, tomatoes, banana peppers, ate that with a side of apples and peanut butter, and I was in heaven. That does sound super good. Super good. Great question, Sam. Super great question. Kirsten, oh my goodness, is there anything that we left out? Is there anything that you, that comes to mind about your Brightline Eating journey, about yourself, about anything? Oh, I feel like there's still so much that I could share just because I'm so passionate about it. But the one thing that I want to emphasize, that a truth that I have held so close to my heart is that what you said, we're not called to be perfect. We're called to be unstoppable. That is something that I'm really holding onto in the moments um, where I don't feel perfect. Even being asked to do this, I'm like, I'm not a crystal racer. Like, should I be here sharing my story? But that's not a requirement of right line eating. And I find it beneficial to hear people who have learned how to resume and be self-compassionate. So that is the one message that I want to share um, to all of my friends watching and right line eating family that we are called to be unstoppable and not perfect. And I think the deeper we can let that sink in, the easier it is to resume. Yeah. Beautiful, sweetheart. It's so good to meet you, Kirsten Dunteman from Kansas City, Missouri. Nice to meet you, sweetheart. It's just really a pleasure. Yes, thank you so much. It's been so wonderful to meet you and talk to you. Yeah, oh, the pleasure's been all mine. Thank you everyone for joining us for the very, very first Bright Life for interview for our Facebook Live interview series. And yeah, Kirsten and I will see you next time. Bye everyone. All right, thank you.